Purpose 5. You were made for a mission. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30, New International Version. Day 36. Made for a mission. In the same way that you gave me a mission in the world, I give them a mission in the world. John chapter 17 verse 18. The Message. The most important thing is that I complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus gave me. Acts, chapter 20, verse 24, New Century Version. You were made for a mission. God is at work in the world, and he wants you to join him. This assignment is called your mission. God wants you to have both a ministry in the body of Christ and a mission in the world. Your ministry is your service to believers, and your mission is your service to unbelievers. Fulfilling your mission in the world is God's fifth purpose for your life. Your life mission is both shared and specific. One part of it is a responsibility you share with every other Christian, and the other part is an assignment that is unique to you. We will look at both parts in the days ahead. Our English word, mission, comes from the Latin word for sending. Being a Christian includes being sent into the world as a representative of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Jesus clearly understood his life mission on earth. At age 12, he said, I must be about my Father's business. And 21 years later, dying on the cross, he said, It is finished. Like bookends, these two statements frame a well-lived, purpose-driven life. Jesus completed the mission the Father gave him. The mission Jesus had while on earth is now our mission, because we are the body of Christ. What he did in his physical body, we are to continue in his spiritual body, the church. What is that mission? Introducing people to God. The Bible says, Christ changed us from his enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. God wants to redeem human beings from Satan and to reconcile them to himself so we can fulfill the five purposes he created us for, to love him, to be a part of his family, to become like him, to serve him, and to tell others about him. Once we are his, God uses us to reach others. He saves us and then he sends us out. The Bible says we have been sent to speak for Christ. We are the messengers of God's love and purposes to the world. The importance of your mission. Fulfilling your life mission on earth is an essential part of living for God's glory. The Bible gives us several reasons why your mission is so important. First, your mission is the continuation of Jesus' mission on earth. As his followers, we are to continue what Jesus started. Jesus calls us not only to come to him, but to go for him. Your mission is so significant that Jesus repeated it five times in five different ways in five different books of the Bible. It is as if he was saying, I really want you to get this. Study these five commissions of Jesus, and you will learn the details of your mission on earth. The when, the where, the why, and the how. In the Great Commission, Jesus said, Go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to do everything I have told you. This commission was given to every follower of Jesus, not to pastors and missionaries alone. This is your commission from Jesus, and it's not optional. These words of Jesus are not the great suggestion. If you are a part of God's family, your mission is mandatory, and to ignore it would be disobedience. You may have been unaware that God holds you responsible for the unbelievers who live around you, but the Bible says you must warn them so they may live. If you don't speak out to warn the wicked, to stop their evil ways, they will die in their sins, but I will hold you responsible for their death. You are the only Christian some people will ever know, and your mission is is to share Jesus with them. Second, your mission is a wonderful privilege. Although it's a big responsibility, it is also an incredible honor to be used by God. 
Paul said, God has given us the privilege of urging everyone to come into his favor and be reconciled to him. Your mission involves two great privileges, working with God and representing him. We get to partner with God in the building of his kingdom. Paul calls us co-laborers and says, we are workers together with God. Jesus has secured our salvation, put us in his family, given us his spirit, and then made us his agents in the world. What a privilege. The Bible says we're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. Number three, telling others how they can have eternal life is the greatest thing you can do for them. If your neighbor had AIDS or cancer and you knew the cure, it would be criminal to withhold that life-saving information. Even worse is to keep secret the way to forgiveness, purpose, peace, and eternal life. We have the greatest news in the world, and sharing it is the greatest kindness you can show to anyone. One problem long-term Christians have is that they forget how hopeless it felt to be without Christ. We must remember that no matter how contented or successful people appear to be, without Christ, they're hopelessly lost and headed for eternal separation from God. The Bible says Jesus is the only one who can save people. Everybody needs Jesus. Fourth, your mission has eternal significance. It will impact the eternal destiny of other people. So it's more important than any job, achievement, or goal you will reach during your life on earth. The consequences of your mission will last forever. The consequences of your job will not. Nothing else you do will ever matter as much as helping people establish an eternal relationship with God. This is why we must be urgent about our mission. Jesus said, all of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned us by the one who sent me, because there's little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. The clock is ticking down on your life mission. So don't delay another day. Get started on your mission of reaching out to others now. We will have all of eternity to celebrate with those we brought to Jesus, but we only have our lifetime in which to reach them. This doesn't mean you should quit your job or become a full-time evangelist. God wants you to share the good news where you are. As a student, a mother, a preschool teacher, a salesman, or a manager, or whatever you do, you should continually look for people God places in your path with whom you can share the good news. Fifth, your mission gives your life meaning. William James said, the best use of life is to spend it for something that outlasts it. The truth is, only the kingdom of God is going to last. Everything else will vanish. That's why we must live purpose-driven lives. Lives committed to worship, fellowship, spiritual growth, ministry, and fulfilling our mission on earth. The result of these activities will last forever. If you fail to fulfill your God-given mission on earth, you will have wasted the life God gave you. Paul said, my life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about God's wonderful kindness and love. There are people on this planet whom only you will be able to reach because of where you live and what God made you to be. If just one person will be in heaven because of you, your life will have made a difference for eternity. So start looking around at your personal mission field and pray, God, who have you put in my life for me to tell about Jesus? Sixth, God's timetable for history's conclusion is connected to the completion of our commission. Today there's growing interest in the second coming of Christ and the end of the world. When will it happen? Just before Jesus ascended to heaven, the disciples asked him the same question, and his response was quite revealing. He said, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When the disciples wanted to talk about prophecy, Jesus quickly switched the conversation to evangelism. He wanted them to concentrate on their mission in the world. He said, in essence, the details of my return are none of your business. 
What is your business is the mission I've given you. Focus on that. Speculating on the exact timing of Christ's return is really futile because Jesus said, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Since Jesus said he didn't know the day or hour, why should you try to figure it out? What we do know for sure is this. Jesus will not return until everyone God wants to hear the good news has heard it. Jesus said the good news about God's kingdom will be preached in all the world to every nation and then the end will come. If you want Jesus to come back sooner, focus on fulfilling your mission, not figuring out prophecy. It's easy to get distracted and sidetracked from your mission because Satan would rather have you do anything else besides sharing your faith. He'll let you do all kinds of good things as long as you don't take anyone to heaven with you. But the moment you become serious about your mission, expect the devil to throw all kinds of diversions at you. When that happens, remember the words of Jesus. Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I planned for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. What it costs to fulfill your mission. To fulfill your mission will require that you abandon your agenda and accept God's agenda for your life. You can't just tack it on to all the other things you'd like to do with your life. You must say, like Jesus, I want your will, Father, not mine. You yield your rights, expectations, your dreams, your plans, your ambitions to him. You stop praying selfish prayers like, God bless what I want to do. Instead, you pray, God, help me to do what you're blessing. You hand God a blank sheet with your name signed at the bottom and tell him to fill in the details. The Bible says, give yourselves completely to God, every part of you, to be tools in the hands of God to be used for his good purposes. If you will commit to fulfilling your mission in life, no matter what it costs, you will experience the blessing of God in ways that few people ever experience. There is almost nothing that God won't do for the man or woman who is committed to serving the kingdom of God. Jesus has promised, God will give you all you need from day to day if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. One more for Jesus. My father was a minister for over 50 years, serving mostly in small rural churches. He was a simple preacher, but he was a man with a mission. And his favorite activity was taking teams of volunteers overseas to build church buildings for small congregations. In his lifetime, Dad built over 150 churches around the world. In 1999, my dad died of cancer. In the final week of his life, the disease kept him awake in a semi-conscious state nearly 24 hours a day. As he dreamed, he'd talk out loud about what he was dreaming. And sitting beside his bedside, I learned a lot about my dad just listening to his dreams. He relived one church building project after another. One night near the end, while my wife and my niece and I were by his side, dad suddenly became very active and tried to get out of bed. Of course, he was too weak and my wife insisted that he lay back down. But he persisted in trying to get out of bed. So my wife finally asked, Jimmy, what are you trying to do? He replied, got to save one more for Jesus. Got to save one more for Jesus. Got to save one more for Jesus. He began to repeat that phrase over and over and over. During the next hour, he said that phrase probably a hundred times. Got to save one more for Jesus. As I sat by his bed with tears flowing down my cheeks, I just bowed my head to thank God for my dad's faith. At that moment, dad reached out and placed his frail hand on my head and he said, as if commissioning me, save one more for Jesus. Save one more for Jesus. I intend for that to be the theme of the rest of my life. And I invite you to consider it as a focus for your life too, because nothing will make a greater difference for eternity. If you want to be used by God, you must care about what God cares about. And what he cares about most is the redemption of the people he made. He wants his lost children found. Nothing matters more to God. The cross proves that. I pray that you will always be on the lookout to reach one more for Jesus. 
so that when you stand before God one day, you can say, mission accomplished. Thinking about my purpose on day 36, a point to ponder. I was made for a mission, a verse to remember. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, New International Version. A question to consider. What fears have kept me from fulfilling the mission God made me to accomplish? What keeps me from telling others the good news?